Hello people, in this video let us look at this fossa of Rosenmuller, okay. So basically this is an, ana uh, this is an anatomy part, so where is fossa of Rosenmuller in this? So basically what is this? First of all, this is the nose, right? This is the mouth, what you are seeing is the tongue. So what will this be? This will be the pharynx. Pharynx has three parts. <clears throat> you have the nasopharynx, oropharynx and the laryngopharynx. So, in the nasopharynx that is here, are you able to see people? Let us take a better color weight. So, here in the nasopharynx you should be able to see fossa of Rosenmuller. It is marked here. Pharyngeal recess, fossa of Rosenmuller. Let us see where it is. Here, okay. Fossa of Rosenmuller is there in the nasopharynx, okay. So let us look at this. Another photo here showing nasopharynx. So here, so this is the boundary they have marked for nasopharynx, right? So in nasopharynx, behind this eustachian tube opening, here they have marked fossa of Rosenmuller, right? So, where is it? It is in the nasopharynx, in the lateral wall. There you have the opening of the eustachian tube, okay? Then there is this torus tubaris, which is the elevation, okay? So, what and all are there in the lateral wall? Eustachian tube, Torus tubaris, then you have the above this and behind this you have the fossa of Rosenmuller. It is the commonest site for origin of carcinoma, that is cancer. So it is the commonest site for origin of carcinoma. Look at this photo now. So here the fossa of Rosenmuller is shown here. This is fossa of Rosenmuller, common site for nasopharyngeal carcinoma. This is where it is behind the opening of the eustachian tube and behind the torus tubaris. Okay. So, where is the fossa of Rosenmuller, guys? Here. Okay. See behind your nose. Okay. Look at this fossa of Rosenmuller, endoscopic view. So, torus tubaris and this is the torus tubaris you can see right the elevation eustachian tube opening and then you have the fossa of frozen mulla okay common site for what cancer nasopharyngeal cancer carcinoma the textbook says that uh, it is a part of waldeus ring also so waldeus ring see they are including Tubal tonsil, which is in the fossa of Rosenmuller. If they are not including Rosenmuller, but it is including tubal tonsils, which are in the fossa of Rosenmuller. That we have seen here. See, this is the tubal tonsil, right? So, this is the tubal tonsil of Gerlach. So, behind that you have this fossa of Rosenmuller. Okay. So, they are saying this tubal tonsil. Is a part of Waldeus ring and tubal tonsil is in the fossa of Rosenmuller. So the cancer that occurs here is um, carcinoma of nasopharynx. This is actually it can be caused by Epstein Barr virus, and uh, it is uh, in histological pattern it will be squamous cell carcinoma, and the treatment will be radiotherapy. Okay, a very brief gist this is, and they see this um, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. More in Chinese, okay. This can also spread to intracranial, intracranial structures. So there will be some carcinoma here, and it is going to spread upwards into intracranial structures. Foramen lacerum and foramen ovale will provide direct routes. Okay, for spread to middle cranial fossa. 
it can also spread to I mean all the cervical lymph nodes and all it will affect okay it will affect what the cervical lymph nodes how is it going people are you able to understand uh, this nasopharyngeal carcinoma let's cover that also so basically so this is the nasopharynx in which cancer is developing carcinoma so what will happen there will be nasal obstruction nasal discharge denasal speech okay so this the speech will be sounding very weird right rhinolalia clausa it's called as epistasis means bleeding from the nose then what will happen otologic to the ear also it will affect what will it affect in the ear obstruction of the eustachian tube because eustachian tube opening is here the obstruction of the eustachian tube uh, there will be conducting here conductive hearing loss there could be otitis media that is ear infection right serous or superitive otitis media tinnitus dizziness can have uh, can be there okay then unilateral serous otitis media if 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 an adult okay usually an adult okay comes with unilateral that is one ear okay unilateral serous otitis media you should suspect nasopharyngeal growth then can it affect the eyes let's see yes it can affect the eyes so basically extension of tumor so it will in, uh, affect the sixth nerve that is the abducens nerve that's the cranial nerve 6 it can also affect the cranial nerve 3 4 6 right so basically even 5 they are saying and uh, there can be squint diplopia facial pain reduced corneal reflex so what and all squint diplopia reduced corneal reflex diplopia means what double vision this person can have so this mass here in the fossa of rosenmuller will affect what and all we saw nose we saw how it will affect ear we saw how it will affect eyes also we saw how it will affect okay because of foramen lacrim and oval that is how it affects all these nerves okay so what else do you think this can affect let's see so if there is a carcinoma here and fossa of rosenmuller there can be neck pain stiffness also can be there because of retropharyngeal spread okay finally because of distant spread it can even affect the lung the liver and the bone okay finally it can what and all distant metastasis it can affect the lungs it can affect the liver and it can also affect bone we try to draw a bone this is a bone so it will affect bone lungs liver right distant metastasis because this is a carcinoma so what are we discussing we are discussing nasopharyngeal carcinoma hold on we are discussing nasopharyngeal carcinoma let us look at what and all it will affect so it will affect cervical nodes it will affect all the eye and all that right then it will affect via parapharyngeal space it is affecting the cranial nerves and it will cause palsies horner syndrome we'll look at this hold on horner syndrome then pterygoid muscles will are affected neck pain stiffness then distant metastasis we saw lung liver bone nose what it will cause nasal obstruction epistasis and proptosis eustachian tube will be blocked so there can be serious otitis media so horner syndrome you can see the eyelid here is covering more the upper eyelid is covering more right even lower eyelid can cause problem here actually they have said proptosis right proptosis was what protrusion or displacement of eye there is another terminology here if you want to know called as trotters triad okay so basically here they are saying there will be conductive deafness because of eustachian tube blockage ipsilateral temporal temporo parietal neuralgia because of involvement of cranial nerve 5 that is trigeminal <clears throat> then 
palatal paralysis because of cranial nerve tendons vagus. So this is called as trotus triad. What and all will be there? Eustachian tube blockage will lead to conductive deafness. Ipsilateral temporoparietal neuralgia. That means same side. Temporoparietal neuralgia. Just touch, touch between your temp between your or touch your temporal and parietal both bones okay on one side which side you think the tumor is there that side only you press okay that is because of the cranial nerve 5 then palatal paralysis this is because of vagus nerve okay this is trotter's triad so actually we started off with foza of rosenmuller and we have come so far we have come off to carcinoma details etc anyways we'll do one thing we'll just uh, close this video Okay, this nasopharyngeal carcinoma, there is a lot about it, but at least this much you know. How will you diagnose this? So basically you can do endoscopic evaluation, imaging studies, biopsy, audiogram, so many words are there here. Right, so you can do CT, MRI, so many other things are there, positron emission, tomography, scan, biopsy, audiogram. So obviously endoscopic evaluation, right. Then there is some classification also there, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. So classification that uh, you have that, how will you classify? Staging is there, right? TNM staging you have, that is tumor, lymph node and uh, what is M? Metastasis, okay. Based on this, they have this classification, you can go through this, okay. Then we will finally go to Treatment. Treatment of what? Treatment of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Where is this nasopharyngeal carcinoma guys? It is in the course of Rosenmuller. Looks like they have some staging also. Okay. Stages like they have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And uh, for 1 and 2 they are saying radiotherapy you can do. And uh, 3, 4 you can do chemotherapy combined with radiotherapy. Okay. So that is what they are saying is the treatment. Based on the TNM, no, they are doing the stage grouping. You can see here, no. Based on the TNM, they are doing the stage grouping and based on that, they are giving the treatment. Now it makes sense, right? So you have, for 1 and 2, what will you give? <coughs> radiotherapy. And for 3 and 4, chemotherapy combined with radiotherapy. So <coughs> in this uh, chemotherapy, they are talking about cisplatin. And to prevent, rec uh, for recurring, they have some other treatment. Hold on. Radiotherapy, therapy, chemotherapy, right? All these we saw. There, there is treatment for recurrent and residual disease. Treatment for recurrent and residual disease, persistent disease. So, this is kind of, um, they are telling something like brachytherapy, nasopharyngectomy, right? Please look at some more details on this if you want from the textbook. So basically, we have in this video looked at nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Basically, uh, where does it arise from? The fossa of Rosenmuller. You saw what the fossa of Rosenmuller is, where exactly it is, right? In the nasopharynx. So we saw the anatomy part. Then we saw uh, usually in Chinese they see this and this carcinoma. And this can, uh, this is caused by Epstein-Barr virus, right? Among other causes. This is squamous cell carcinoma, right? Intracranial structures it can metastasize to because it's a malignant condition, right? Then what else? We saw how it spreads everywhere. Waldeyer's ring, uh, in Fosa of Rosenmuller, actually tubal tonsils will be there. Trotter's triad you saw, will be, there will be three things, the deafness, conductive deafness, ipsilateral temporoparietal neuralgia and palatal paralysis. Then diagnosis, how will you do? Endoscopic evaluation, CT scan, MRI, biopsy, audiogram. We saw the classification and staging, then <coughs> treatment. Okay, that's all for now in this video guys. Hope you have liked this video. Bye-bye.